I can't hear. <clears throat> oh, okay, I now I can hear. I caught. I can't hear you again. Uh, I also can't hear anybody. I'll send a message to Judy. Shalom, Judy. Um, we can't hear the speaker on the Zoom. Think about the question. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go back to the historical background. We know that Paro had three advisors. Okay. Thank you. We hear seven you. for advice regarding the Jewish problem. One, the first one was Bilam, and his advice was destroy them, get rid of them. The second one, Iov, and he remained silent. He said nothing. And then there was Yitro. He fled and he refused to partake in the discussion. Now, Yitra was an individual who was held in high acclaim. He was a priest of Midian. He had studied and researched all the religions, all the Avodot Zarot, and found no meaning. And he had a strong critical eye, which prompted his criticism of the judicial system that Moshe was using. So he wisely advised Moshe that he has to delegate. And it was not sustainable to continue the way he was doing. So he went to Moshe and he said, people are coming to you for guidance, but there must be intermediaries that report to a higher authority. Very good logical advice. Moshe learned the concept of burnout uh, for Yitro's advice, but we still remain with the question. Moshe, we know, was on the highest spiritual level could he not have figured this out, okay? Why did he need an outsider? Is this a reason to give such honor to Yitro and a full parsha in his name? The Or Chaim teaches, as Shem wanted to make a sign for generations, Jews must realize that there are intellectual giants amongst the Gentiles possessing great knowledge. And as we know, Chochmah Bagoyim Tamim, Torah Bagoyim Al Tamim. There is wisdom amongst the Gentiles. But if you think there's Torah amongst the Gentiles, do not believe it. Hashem did not choose us for our wisdom. If so, he could have chosen other nations as well. It was purely a chesed. It was a chesed el yom that the Kaddish Baruch Hu did for us in the Sut Avot, okay? Rabbi Shimshon Rafal Hirsch teaches, Moshe was the closest to Hashem, but he was not a statesman. We learn the qualities of a true Evan Hashem. One doesn't have to be the most brilliant thinker. One must be humble. One must be sincere, searcher, for closest to Hashem. Humility, as you know, is ranked very high in Yiddishkeit. Ba'ish Moshe, anav mikol adam. And the man Moses was the most humble of all the people. That is all the Torah tells us 
about Moshe's qualities, and that, ladies, says it all. So back to our question. Why did Yitro rank so high? Well, Yitro fled. He lost his career as a high priest. He spoke truth. He merited children who sat on the Sanhedrin. He was disdained by his fellow man. His daughters were shun. And Moshe meets them at the well, and no one was there to try to help them. It was Moshe who tried to help the girls, if you remember. Now, at this point, the question is, Yitro was an older man already. Why did he decide to convert now? Okay, this is a question. Very often, elderly, and no one here was elderly, struggle <laughs> with the ability to change. Listen, the Lubavitcher Rebbe says, I see my friend Shalom is out there, if you can see Rebbe, the Lubavitch Rebbe says there's no such thing as retirement. Only the Kaddish Baruch who retires you. I said that it's my mother-in-law's 90th birthday, and I told you that. Okay, so Yitro, the prototype, says to us, you know, it shows us you can be older and you can change. You can change. Now, the reason he did not become a Ger right after Trias Yamsu is because he feared that he would be accused of jumping on the bandwagon. What does that mean? After Kriyas Yamsu and the miracles there, people would say the Jews are in a high position and therefore he schmuck to be Jewish, right? Why not? I don't think anybody now would say something schmuck in the world scene to come on to be Judaism. But anyhow, I deal with that world. Okay. Yitro's thinking was that when Amalek, listen carefully, confronts the Jews, there will be an awakening. And why? The lesson being, don't close the door to Geir, a Geir said it. And I repeat again, a Geir said, why? Because an individual who is sincerely seeking Hashem and desiring to attach themselves to the Jewish people, that is something praised and lauded. Now, for your information, all right, last week and why I didn't join the Tu Bishvat Yul, I just got here a few days before, before that. I was doing my international teaching, and there were women from Far East, Singapore, Indonesia, whatever, it doesn't matter. And there's one woman on my screen from Indonesia, and I asked her at the end to share. Eight years struggling in a Muslim country, eight years, and not giving up. She got up, there were a lot of ladies on the Zoom, and she said, and Baruch Hashem, and I thank Hashem for this opportunity, and I will not give up. She is not Megari yet. She's learning and she's trying to attach herself to the nearest based in uh, by Gutnick in, uh, in Sydney, Australia, who I have Kesher to. And this woman got up and spoke. And I tell you, I had tears in my eyes. I know her. Okay. This is Monsieur Ritnefish. This is the Geert Sedek that we're talking about. And that is an attestation of the potential hidden within the soul of a true seeker. And Yitro was that kind of a seeker. So, what is the connection with Amale? Well, Listen to this one. The mother of Amalek was who? Timna, the wife of Eliphaz. Now, she was the daughter-in-law of Asaph. Now, here's the history the Gemara shares with us. She wanted to marry into the family of Yitzhak because he came from a prestigious family, known to all. And she was not accepted. She was rejected. She raised a son to hate Jews. She felt shut out. Yitro reckoned, now that Amalek is rising against the Jews, they will have harata, the Jewish people will have harata, they will have regrets, and they will understand what it means to reject a true seeker of Torah Hashem, an emistic seeker of Torah Hashem. Now this opens another discussion because we are not missionaries. We have clear directives, regerim, we do not advertise. We have to work scrupulously to discern sincerity. In fact, I always tell my students one line. Not everybody likes me for it, but they get it after a while. And I tell them, you know, I said, if everyone, if you walk out of the door, I have no problem with that. At least I've shown you your choices. And believe me, I've had people who said that to me, 
thank you for giving me exposure to what Orthodox Judaism is. I would have never known anything about it. But where you're trying to get me and where I think I'll be able to go, it's not going to work. We part very good friends. It's not about me. This is what it is. Three times, according to Allah, our Diana pushed her away. It's not such a simple process as being advertised around the world. In fact, an upstanding high-level baking deters and discourages, like I said. Now, that being said, once you pass that, okay, the Chida, anybody heard of the Chida? Rabbi Yossi David Azulai? He comments, listen to this thought, okay? He comments on the Gemara in Masechet Ketubot, page Kuftet Beis. And the teaching is that a rabbi who makes a campaign to collect air, and this is not me speaking, will have ra'a, will have evil befall him. But Tosvos, the commentary says that a Gerd setting, and again, I use the term Gerd setting, sincerely searching, we must accept him. Why? Because look what happened because of Timna. Timna, we're going back thousands of years. Look what we're suffering. Look what happened to us because we didn't let her in. Who knows? I wasn't there. So, Rabbi Israel may allow. Who doesn't know Rabbi Israel? An angel in our times, okay? Former chief rabbi of Israel. One of the most distinguished and refined heroes of our nation. A child of the Holocaust. I am a first generation on all sides survivor. Why am I back and forth all the time? My dear parents and my mother in law, all survivors of Auschwitz and Gehenna are all living in a life today, well in their 90s. So this is my guess and this is my suit. So what did Rav Lau say? And he has a link from a long yichus of rabbis. And he says, Yitro came now because of Milchemet Amalek, because of the strong lesson that was taught about the character of Am Yisrael, which is so beautiful. Listen, he assumed that by nature, the Jews must be fearful. <laughs> Why? His question being, why did they not attempt to fight the Egyptians? How come we didn't pick up our hands and fight? Why didn't we raise our hands and battle? But the Jewish people must be a fearful nation, relying just on Hashem, they're, they're never. They don't have an army. They don't have Tzav. Don't get started. So, only works with Hashem. So now, however, they take up the battle against the Malay. How can you reconcile this? Now, all of a sudden, they're in the battle cry. Yitra being a deep thinking man understood that the reason the Jews did not take up arms against the Egyptians is because of Hakaratatov. What is Hakaratatov? Recognizing the good. The Egyptians gave them the land of Goshen. The Egyptians provide them with food. What is Hakaratatov? Hakaratatov means recognizing the good. What is a Jew? What is the hallmark of a Jew? What's a Yudhi? Where do we get the name? What did Leia say? Papa Model Hashem. When she got her fourth, when she got more, then she thought she narrated based on the map of the Shrekin, and she said, Papa Model Hashem. That's what it is. That's what Mordechai Yud is. That's what we are, recognizing the good. And when Yitro saw that, he said, this is a nation I have to attach with. Okay. Because this is not a nation that doesn't pick up arms because they don't have battle. This is a nation that will not strike at the hand or bite the hand of feature wherever this thing goes. Winding down almost, okay. So, in conclusion, at the time allotted, Yitro, because <laughs> I usually talk about this for an hour and a half. Yitro, according to the teachings of the Baba Shereba, show the Jewish people that you can change. And we as a nation, exiting bondage, did not believe that we were worthy. Listen. We were slaves. All the miracles were done unto us. We are slaves unto slaves unto slaves. What kind of essence, self-esteem did we really have? Okay? And Nietzsche taught us something so amazing. And the reference is the Torah. It, it, it couldn't have been given much the Torah without because he had to show you that no matter what station you are, no matter how far you are, don't we know people that are so far with the world? And look, look what became the Jewish people. We can change. We can change daily, and we can change in heaps. And it was Yitzhak, the prototype of a Gerd Sedek, who taught that to us. And he ushered in the right mindset for future generations. So, to conclude, the Gemara in Kedushin teaches us 
Kashe kegerim kisapachat Yisrael. What does that mean? It's not such a nice statement when you read it in Hebrew. A ger is like a thorn to the Jewish people. You ever heard that? You know it. Well, I'll tell you. This is a Jesus no. one when I teach, but it's a big compliment. Kashe kisapachat. Sapachat is like a thorn. A ger who enters the Jewish people is like a thorn. Now. Thorns aren't really such nice things, but why? Listen, Lama, because when a gear comes and people look and see the gear's sincerity, it picks, it pokes at the neshama of the Jew and it says, Look at her, look where she came from. She didn't go to Jerusalem, she didn't go to Beis Africa, she didn't have parents who lit candles. Look at her, look what she did. What about me, ladies? I teach this and I'm telling you, my students tell me in decades already, that they get this all the time. This is the ultimate compliment. This is the ultimate compliment. A gear shows you can come from so far and you can embrace the shim. A gear has the merit to be but Sarah and then Abram. It doesn't come easy. It's mysterious nefesh. I was discussing this in uh, Shul, uh, where I live in, in uh, Harkonnen, and uh, Israeli Moroccan woman, she's the one saying to me, I teach, blah, blah. So she says to me, Ma? She's me. Come as my okay after the So how much? How long does it take you to do the conversion? I said, we don't have a timeline. One year, three year, five years, no time. She goes, Yuffie, she's telling them come and kashali of you. Show them, show them how difficult it is to be a Jew. This is what I heard from a Tzati woman, forty years old. I wanted to kiss her. I said, come, come work with me. Okay. So why? Because a born Jew, I'm finished. This is it. Yitra remains <laughs> one more part. You, I lost time before. Yitra remains the prototype for all generations. He merited setting the tone, teaching by example, and infusing the plunging nation of the Jewish people with hope and belief in the power that we can exercise change internally. May we all be inspired by the sincere seekers of Torah Tashem always and support them and remember the mitzvah to love the Ger Tzedek it says it over 30 times in the Torah thank you I, 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 I love when Esther comes here Nahan, I love to be here I love that she teaches us I love that she's with us I love that I learn okay Okay, so um, we're going on. We're just in a bit of a. I don't just, know. We're, we're, could you do this? Okay. Yeah, we'll do it privately. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Thank I'm sorry. I don't mean to. You, you are I'm not rude. rude. You are right. The best kids as possible. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're we're doing we'll be working on uh, Bona. As you all know, last week we began talking about the idea of Midabe Chelakim connecting pieces, just like in the, in the Mishkan, right? All the, besides building a whole structure, okay, all the little pieces, the sockets, the hooks, the bars, the, all of these things were put together. And that, that became the, uh, that created the idea of Medabe Chelekim, okay? And we said there were in three different categories. There is making utensils, um, ochel, binyan ochel, ochlin, in food, which is not what we started with, and uh, assembled structures. Okay, so hopefully we're gonna finish up food today. Okay, we, we talked about the idea that um, um, the, 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 the Gemara speaks very specifically about making cheese, right? The little curds and ways, curds, the curds. There, where's Miss Muffet when I need it? Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, the curds are pressed into a mold and they form, they, they completely change their form. They become a solid thing. And that is the malacha of bone. It is exactly the idea of taking all these little pieces, pressing them into a mold, and, and then they become a solid piece over, over time. And, and by the way, the, the thing is that it's the pressing into a mold. Could everybody just take a minute, really? We got a lot of phones going today. Everybody just take a minute, put your phone on silent. Okay, it's, 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 how do I do this now? Okay, um, okay, so, so, uh, 
Yeah, so we're, so we're putting all these little pieces together exactly like in the Mishkan. Okay, so we know that there are certain malachos, there are I think six or seven, that kind of have the opposite, right? Like, the, like you, you have um, um, sewing, but you also have the malacha opposing it of tearing, right? Now we remember that, that every malacha is creative. So it's not just in, in terms of the diorisa obligation, sewing would be one malacha, Tearing it apart would be another malacha, but only tearing it apart in order to do to, to do a, a for, to prepare basically for for the positive mitzvah for the uh, proactive proactive you know, the positive aspect of it, right? So so for example, a mochek erasing it's the the malacha diaraisa is you do only a race for the purpose of being able to write in its place. Okay, there's a number of malachas like that. So Bona has its partner, and that is Soser or Soter. Okay, that's what we're going to be doing next. So the same way that there is a malacha to put something together, there's a malacha to take it apart, right? But taking it apart for the purpose of rebuilding it. So, so there's actually, here's like, it just tells you something about the, the nature of this malacha. The, to, 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 so if you have cheese, cheese that is made, Okay, but if you grate cheese or cut cheese or do anything else with the cheese, taking it apart is not the malacha of, it's not the malacha of soter, right? Because you can never, once cheese is cheese, once cheese is cheese, um, you, can, <laughs> you, you can never put it, you can never make it go back to those little individual little curves and ways and they have their ways about them. So, so. So it is not the malacha of, of soter to, to, grade, to grade cheese. Okay, so let's just talk about a few other uh, food issues. Food issues, yeah, tell me. Start thinking for it, thinking about for it. Okay, um, okay, so we said that, that the essence of this malacha is that when you put it into some kind of a, a mold and it, and it becomes a solid thing. Okay, so this also applies to other foods. So for example, mashed potatoes, if you put it into some kind of a form, or even if you smooth mashed potatoes, that would not be permitted. Um, taking anything like- uh, What do you mean by that? Do you have a plate with a mashed potato you can mash You shouldn't smooth it, yeah. Shouldn't smooth it. You're compressing the pieces together, okay? And you're making it- yeah, yeah, but you're you're compressing the pieces and you're putting it into into a, a to a shape. Okay, that this also applies to tuna fish, egg salad, chopped liver, um, and anything that you're putting into like a mold, right? Like you press it into a mold and you tip it over and it's got it, you know, there's a little fish to a mold, right? That's the, that that's that's the that's you can put it. You can certainly you can put it on a plate. It's it's the idea is that you're creating a form. You're creating a specific shape. Okay. Um, okay, this does not apply to chopping other vegetables. Like even if you were to, even if you were to, to put, um, you know, to, to make nice little pretty pieces of cucumber with lines on it or cut, you know, stuff into, this, this is not what the malacha is. You're allowed to make pretty cuts on your cucumbers and, things like that. Um, you are, um, because um, again, it's, 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 the, it's connecting pieces, right? If you just by the fact that you put, you know, a little, you cut a, a cucumber into a square instead of a circle, okay, you, you haven't connected any pieces. You just made it into a pretty shape. Okay. All right. So one last thing, which, um, oh, we'll wait till next week. Oh, <laughs> Okay. Time is up. Time is up. <laughs> exactly, exactly that. Time will wait for next week. Okay, so we have um, a bunch of announcements. First of all, I, 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 I'm really happy to announce. I don't, I don't, I may, I'm certainly not the first one to announce this, but I'm very honored that we have in our midst a Kala. Okay. Yay. Three and a half weeks. Did you shoot on me, Haber, are you now Schuster? Mary, okay, 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 Mary, she married Chaim Shusin, and, and 
So I think all of our regular classes will take place, except for uh, Ilana is not with us today. So um, the 10 o'clock, Ilana Rachman. So the, the 10 o'clock class, the 11, Ilana's not here. So the 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock class, 11 o'clock class, you'll have to choose something else for this week. What are the choices? I'll tell you what. She's going to be okay. She actually went to be a grandmother. Uh, <laughs> she went to a sitter party or something like that. That's wonderful. Okay, so, um, okay, at 12 o'clock, we have a, a special treat. I mean, this is, I think this is a huge, huge accomplishment. Okay, Leia has written a book. Our Leia Zelotaro has written a book, published, it's available. I'm just going to, it's called. Life of Inescapable Transformation, The Book of Wonders by Leia Zolotaro. That's what it says here. Okay, so at, at 12 o'clock, we're having a book launch. Okay, and uh, you're, you're more than, uh, you, you, you know, you can buy books from her. She'll give you a signed copy. Here's my little signature here. Okay, it says, everybody's life is filled with happenings and ups and up and down events. We often do not connect them and see them as random. This is what I felt before it became known to me that they were all connected in a strange and unpredictable pattern. Many miracles happened in my life that I did not understand. And because I had no explanation, I called them good luck. Years later, when my eyes were open to reality, I understood the source of the miraculous events was divine providence. I lived in three universes, each politically, culturally, and spiritually different. Russia, the former Soviet Union, USA, and Israel. Here is the story of my life. So get your copy here. Get your free copy. Get your copy. Absolutely. Okay, so that's uh, um, it's 60 shekels for the soft cover and 100 for the hard cover, and you're, you all uh, are welcome. Okay, 1230, um, popular demand. Yadida is going to be continuing uh, two more weeks, um, and uh, and then we move on to Purim with, <laughs> with Rabbi Rome. Okay, everybody starts thinking Purim party. You know, I mean, it's like two Bishwab passes, Purim party. You don't have to immediately think about Pesach. Thing. All right. <laughs> you could. You could if you want. You could. Okay. Um, okay, just want to remind everybody, beginning of the month, dues, weekly contribution, whatever you hear, there's the box. Fill it up. One moment, please. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I think that is it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just also, a joy asked to announce that there's the annual um, Shvat hike in honor of Tikva Konza Kol Levracha, which will be Tuesday. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow, um, and everybody is cordially invited to come. You meet at the Soraya parking lot at 9:30, and coming back at two and um, Talk to her for more details. Okay, anybody? Okay, yeah. Jody, Jody. She has this really great event. She comes to Okay, that's 36 days. I think it's only 15 minutes a day, which is really good. She's going on the meeting. And she does it with a little more recordings. And so I've heard $6 for 36 days. Okay, so I'm going to start. 
interesting. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say that today is an amazing day. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 There's an event tonight happening for all ages groups in women of the community <clears throat> in her honor. It's at the Tel Aviv Hotel in front of 30. Of course, I would like to share stories, but I will not because I don't have the time. <laughs> However, all of you can um, access the book today. It's very special. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. I want to remind everyone to give it to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lizzie. From Sarah's closet. So you can go and put your clothes very cheaply or form outfits, whatever you want. At the old Sharibina. I think so. Is that one of places? Yeah, that's one of places. And then it's yeah, they're then they're closing, so it's really a blowout sale. Okay, that's so right. The other thing is, it's a very important announcement for a nine-year-old. My nine-year-old um, grandson is collecting these tea bags. Oh. <laughs> okay. So my friend is next to the tea of them. Oh. 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 They do. It's cheaper than steaks. They used to collect that. Yeah. It's at the old Charibina. Go ahead, Ilana. Okay. Um, I brought the catalog for the um, collecting money for and um, who's interested in buying tickets? Me and. Um, Everything from $100,000 dollar prize to uh, yeah, donations. This is a big event every year. Ezra Mitzion is, is an amazing organization. When my sister needed a, a bone marrow transplant, I had taken a test. Nobody could find the results anywhere. Somebody from Ezra Mitzion called this hospital, this, this bank, this bank, this place, this place. So they found that the, the results of my test and sent it on to New York that, that, you know, that we were a match. And uh, well, it didn't go further than that, but I, it was, a, they made a tremendous effort and they, they do these kinds of things regularly and many wonderful projects. So it's a very worthwhile thing. To, to they support. connect and close starts. My granddaughters from Bay Shaka were all collecting kids all over. All over yeah. the, yeah, yeah, all over. Okay. Did I miss anything or Ilana is not here? Ilana's not here. Hi, I'm Shoshana. Hi, Shoshana. Hi, Shoshana. Hi, Shoshana. Hi, Shoshana. And Jenna Davenport is a boy, nine years old. It's Kedem Sunshine. Then, then the son is very, very well and critical. That's his name? Kedem Sunshine? Kedem Sunshine. Okay. Okay. Kedem Sunshine. Then Shoshana Tupac. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay, everybody. That's it. We're late. Let's go learn some Torah. Okay, what's, uh, what's going on? Um, what's going on? What's going on?